Hey everyone, Charlie Sink here. Hey, I wanted to put together a video on making tiny springs. <laughs> Oftentimes in my projects, uh, springs and tiny springs especially can be the bane of my existence. So I thought I'd do a video showing the techniques that I use to make teeny tiny little springs. Welcome to another edition of The Weevil Genius. Here are the tools and supplies for making tiny springs. For springs to be springy, they need to be made from spring wire. Guitar strings are a handy source of spring wire. I get mine at the local music shop or on Amazon. This is 10 thousandths diameter spring wire. If I need a lot more of a certain size wire, I go to McMaster Car. This is 9 thousandths wire, about 25 feet. Safety first. Always wear safety glasses when working around spring wire. The ends are incredibly sharp, and it could go into your eye, and it would really ruin your day. <clears throat> to cut spring wire, you'll need a quality pair of wire cutters. These cost about $25. You'll notice that the jaws have no nicks or dings from cutting spring wire. When cutting spring wire, always make sure the wire is pointed away from you. That little cutoff piece flew about 20 feet in my shop. You can also use a Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel to cut larger diameter spring wire. Okay, let's wind some spring. To wind a spring, you'll need a mandrel to wind it on. Drill bits work great and come in a whole variety of sizes. Behold the drill index. So here we go. Put the mandrel in the drill chuck. Get your spring wire and insert it so it can be clamped between one of the drill chuck jaws and the mandrel. Just a little bit of tension on the drill chuck is all it takes. With my left hand holding the drill and my right hand pulling tension on the wire, I run the drill as slowly as I can while pulling tension on the wire. I'm watching the wire very carefully as it winds along the mandrel. I want to make sure that it winds evenly and winds tightly up against the previous winds. This takes some practice. Once I have enough winds on the mandrel, I stop the drill and then run it the other direction to release the wound up tension in the spring wire. If this is not done and you cut the wire or let go of the wire, it'll snap around and make kind of a miniature bird's nest. And you'll have to start over. And the tension's off the wire. Loosen the chuck, take out the mandrel, and there's your spring. That turned out pretty well. Now we need to put some ends on it to make it useful. To do that, I modify a pair of needle nose pliers. A common problem with needle nose pliers is that the tips don't make contact, making it hard to grasp, grasp small things like small diameter spring wire. To make the modification, I use my blowtorch. and my handheld multi-directional dimension modifier. A few well-placed blows is all it takes. That's much better. Now we just need to do a little grinding and we'll have it. To bend the first loop on the spring, I slide the ground tip of the needle nose pliers up between two loops of the spring, and then I carefully bend over uh, the, the loop, and there's one end bent over. After bending the other end, this is what it looks like. I'm quite happy with how, how that turned out. So let's make a compression spring. To do that, I use the same winding technique as before. After the spring is wound, I carefully stretch it out. Too much stretching will ruin the spring. Just the right amount makes a good compression spring. Once it's stretched out, I carefully trim off the ends.
Another method for winding springs is on the lathe. Lathes are normally used for turning metal, like this. They're also really handy for winding springs with spring wire that's too large a diameter to work with a hand drill metal. Let's take a look at how that's done. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time.